This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, mystery, and sci-fi film called Deep. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. A student stands over the ledge of their school building. Police and faculty members rush to stop the troubled young man, but he falls before they reach him. Professor Nitschcha holds a lesson regarding insomnia and its effects on the brain. The effects include confusion and hallucinations. Jane. A medical student recounts how long as she went without sleeping when she and her sister first moved in with her grandmother. Jane had been paranoid about the house's security, so she continuously checks the locks on the doors. As they grow up, her sister comes home later at night, causing Jane to become more paranoid about her safety. Even now, Jane struggles to sleep, but she makes the most out of it by studying and running errands. Jane finishes preparing home-cooked meals for her small cafeteria, which opens early in the morning. When she opens the cafeteria one day, she finds a notice from their bank demanding payment for their housing loan. Only then does her sister, June, arrive home. At school, Jane announces her desire to quit due to her financial struggles. Professor Nitschcha tries to find her a job at school so Jane doesn't have to quit. Suddenly, she remembers a German pharmaceutical company called Weimar that is searching for volunteers. Jane's insomnia qualifies for the subjects they need, so the professor hands her their business card. Later, Jane watches a video about a procedure named The Deep, which harvests crotonin from the subjects to create medicine for brain dead patients. The Deep consists of three levels. The higher the level, the more crotonin they need to complete the procedure. Jane meets the company's director of research, Hans Miller. He explains that crotonin is the chemical in the brain released to keep them awake. After learning that she'll receive 100,000 baht for participating in the level 1 procedure, Jane immediately signs up for it. A microchip is installed at the back of her neck to extract crotonin from her brain. Hans gives her a watch that tracks her heartbeat and the amount of crotonin that the chip has harvested from her. He instructs her to return when the chip reaches 100%. He reminds her that she cannot tell anyone about the experiment. Just before she leaves, Hans warns her not to fall asleep for more than a minute while the microchip is installed, since it may malfunction and stop her heart. The watch will wake her up if she does fall asleep, so he assures her that it will be safe. That evening, Jane continues her routine. At 2 in the morning, the chip had only harvested 41% of its capacity. She checks on her grandmother and finds her on the floor. Her grandmother smiles and explains that she was just reaching for her dentures under the bed. Jane gives her grandmother a massage, and they discuss the bank's notice. Jane promises that she'll take care of it. Their conversation is interrupted when June arrives home, riding in a car with a man. Jane comforts her sister, who excuses that she booked the ride. Jane doesn't buy it, but June continues making up excuses. Their confrontation leads to June accidentally dropping her phone, breaking its screen. In the afternoon, Jane enjoys her lunch break when her classmate, Wynn, notices her watch from the deep. Wynn is the school's party animal who reveals that he's also partaking in the deep. Jane reminds him that they're not supposed to tell, but Wynn assures her that it's just between them. He shares that there are other professional insomniacs like them. Among them is Sin, a beauty blogger who is forced into medical school by her parents. The other is Peach, a reclusive student and active online gamer. Sin and Peach join them at the table, and they share that they've all received the same deal to participate. Sin loudly proclaims that she can stay up because of the big payout, which catches the attention of some schoolmates. Peach, however, is concerned about the chip killing them if they fall asleep, dampening their mood. Jane announces that she's not afraid, encouraging the group to stay awake, so they stay alive. They compare each other's progress, seeing that Jane has been harvested the most. The four help each other keep track of their crotonin progress. When they've all reached 100%, they'll collect their money from Hans. Peach uses the money for gaming rigs, Sin uses it on beauty treatments, Wynn treats himself to luxury items, and Jane saves it to pay off their debts. The group gathers for a bowling game in celebration. Sin shares that she suspects someone has been stalking her since entering the experiment. Jane asks if they'll go through the experiment again if they were offered to, and Wynn encourages them to enter level 2. Level 2 will gain more money, but will require them to stay up longer. When they start going home, Wynn urges Peach to talk with Sin, knowing that he likes her. Sin asks his opinion on which of her fan suggested titles she should use for her all nighter livestream. Peach picks one, but Sin thinks that whoever suggested it sounded like a creep, not knowing that Peach posted the title. Peach tells her to be careful since he worries about her. Sin teases him that he has a crush on her, which he awkwardly denies, not noticing that Sin is not listening and is already getting into a cab. Still, she waves him goodbye, which uplifts his mood. At home, Jane gives June a new phone with a SIM card that is unlimited data, which she bought with the deep money. Jane also bought her grandmother an electric massager to soothe her aches. Meanwhile, Wynn comes home, much to his father's surprise. Wynn locks his bedroom door and ignores him. Sin arrives at her apartment and receives a call from her mother. 
they get into an argument, so her mother cuts her off financially. One day, Hans explains that level 2 will require them to stay up for 5 days for 500,000 baht. Each of them imagines fulfilling their dreams with that amount of money, encouraging them to enter. On the third day into level 2, everyone struggles to keep awake while only getting less than 50% of the crotonin they need. Wynn could barely focus during basketball practice, causing him to get hit in the head. The imposing team insults him, blaming Wynn for his mother taking her own life. Wynn punches the other player, but his teammates argue that the guy didn't say anything. At night, Jane struggles with their home's lock and becomes short-tempered with her sister. June questions her recent odd behavior, urging her to tell her what her part-time job is. Jane lies and says that she's tutoring, but June doesn't believe it. Jane argues that she's the one paying the bills, so June shouldn't question her. Jane walks out, and June notices the Weimar business card. The next day, Sin is still at 37%. Jane can't focus during class and hallucinates her grandmother as a dummy that they're studying. The group meets up to express their concerns over completing level 2. Sin raises that she also saw other students wearing the deep watches. Jane deduces that they need to keep moving physically to produce more crotonin. To achieve this, the group enjoys a pool party with food and drinks at Peach's house to boost their crotonin. Jane and Wynne share stories while Peach and Sin spend their time together. When asked about her parents, Jane remembers how her parents were murdered. She changes the topic and asks Wynne about his parents. He reveals that his mother has been dead for a long time. To prevent them from falling asleep, Wynne mixes stimulant pills into mocktails. Jane, however, is concerned about the side effects. Wynne confidently drinks one of the mocktails and argues that they'll die if they fall asleep anyways, so the risk is worth it. Convinced, they all drink. The four then dance the night away, increasing their crotonin production during the activity. Dazed, Jane approaches Wynne and kisses him. Later, Sin inspects how sleep deprivation is affecting her skin. She leaves the bathroom and hears a portion of her vlog repeatedly played. She follows the sound and sees Peach's computer where numerous of her videos play simultaneously, and the dolls that she sells are on display. The wall is also littered with countless pictures of her, realizing that Peach is her stalker. Sin faints. The others find her and desperately try to wake her up. Wynn confronts Peach about the wall of pictures, but Jane announces that Sin doesn't have a pulse. They attempt to resuscitate her while her watch counts down. With only two seconds remaining, Sin finally wakes up. In the morning, all of them reach 100%. They return to Hans but announce that they will no longer participate, even when Hans offers them 1 million baht each for level 3. They spend the rest of the morning recovering from five sleepless days. Peach tries to apologize to Sin at school, but she threatens him to keep away from her. He tries to explain that he only had the videos running to boost her channel. Peach begs her to be friends again, but Sin refuses. Meanwhile, Professor Nitschcha raises her concern over Jane's failing grades. Jane admits that it's because of the pharmaceutical job, but assures that she has already quit. Later, Wynne invites Jane to a concert, but she refuses. Wynne admits that he's interested in her, but Jane stresses that she's too busy for relationships. This drives Wynne into despair, clinging to the memory of Jane kissing him the previous night. One day, Jane witnesses a dead student being wheeled out. She sees the body wearing the deep watch. That evening, Jane checks on her grandmother and rushes her to the hospital. Her grandmother suffered a stroke, but they need to move her to another hospital since they can't afford the medical bills. June hands her a bag of money to prevent this, and Jane recognizes that it's from Weimar. June has also entered the deep procedure. She defends that she just wants to help, arguing that Jane isn't the only one who can make sacrifices. Meanwhile, Wynne drunkenly heads to his bedroom but notices the door is open. He confronts his father for taking away his mother's items that Wynne has been keeping. His father argues that Wynne has to move on, but Wynne refuses to forget about his mother. Wynne figures that his father just wants to forget to relieve himself from the guilt. Wynne stresses that he wouldn't have given up on her if it was him. That evening, Jane comes home, but June isn't there. She confronts Hans, who just installed the microchip into June's neck. Jane threatens to call the police, but Hans reminds her about their contract and offers her a trade instead. He will remove June's level 3 chip if Jane convinces the group to participate again. The next day, Jane begs for the group to help, but Sin argues that they nearly died during level 2. Jane assures him they can plan it out to survive. Peach and Sin refuse, but Wynne reminds him that Jane was the one who revived Sin. Wynne promises to help, but the others still refuse. While watching their grandmother in the ICU, June apologizes for entering level 3. Jane forgives her, empathizing with her sister. Meanwhile, Sin streams a beauty product review, but her heart isn't in it. She remembers the fun time she spent with the others while they fought to keep awake. To relax, she takes her sleeping pills and goes to sleep. The next day, June, Jane, and Wynne walk up to the Weimar building and find Peach already waiting for them. Sin also joins in, claiming that it's to pay Jane back for saving her life. 
Hans happily welcomes the group into level 3. On day 1 of level 3, they approach Nitscha for help. She plans to give them a daily dose of Exorol to keep them alert while monitoring them throughout the experiment. They'll be staying in an unused ward that Nitscha's father owns and the professor will maintain communication with them in case of an emergency. The group remains in the ward for five days with no sleep. On the sixth day, Peach hallucinates gunshots from the bathroom. Meanwhile, Sin notices a large pimple on her face, and Wynn hallucinates his mother walking towards him. Jane also hallucinates blood, thinking of her dead parents. When she checks, Jane sees her sister seizing instead. The pimples continue to grow on Sin's face, and Peach has stepped on the rooftop's ledge. Suddenly, June shakes Jane out of the hallucination and everyone realizes that they're okay. However, Sin freaks out and smashes the mirror, causing a wound on her face. Sin gets agitated, yelling at everyone. Wynn tries to calm her down and Sin accuses him of sacrificing them just to win Jane's affections. Angered, Wynn shoves the girl and Peach attempts to defuse the situation. Wynn diverts his attention to Peach, insulting him and claiming that they were never friends. Fuming with rage, Peach throws the first punch, starting a brawl between them. Jane attempts to stop the fight, but Wynn pushes her off. June watches in horror while Sin simply walks away. Desperate, Jane heads out to call the professor for help, but she's nowhere to be found. Instead, Jane finds a room with security monitors, viewing the ward where the group is. There's also monitors that track their vitals, documents, and Hans's business cards. Jane finds a folder containing actor profiles for those who auditioned for the Hans Miller role. Suddenly, Professor Nitscha appears. Jane runs back to the ward to warn the group. She announces that Nitscha is behind the D procedures and desperately searches for her phone to call the police. All their phones, however, have no signal. Their only exit has also been locked. Jane begs Nitscha to let them go. However, the professor is adamant about getting the chips full of Kryptonin, promising to let them out only after she harvests the chips or when they're already dead. The group thrashes the ward to escape, but to no avail. Frustrated, Sin smashes the surveillance cameras. Suddenly, Wynn loses consciousness. In his mind, Wynn sees his mother and he smiles. However, she raises a gun to her chin and pulls the trigger. Wynn's watch reaches zero, and Nitscha wheels him out of the ward. After removing his chip, someone slams her over the head. To her surprise, Wynn is still standing, and the rest of the group enters. After smashing all the cameras, the group faked Wynn's death by injecting him with more Exorol, causing temporary cardiac arrest. They question Nitschja on her motives, and she opens a curtain in the room in response. There, she reveals her lover, unconscious in a hospital bed. 24 years ago, Jed used himself as a test subject for his own research on sleep deprivation. However, it caused him hallucinations that ended with him falling off a building. Jed survived the fall, but has been in a coma since. Nitscha eventually discovered how to extract Kryptonin and used it to treat Jed. He responded positively to the Kryptonin, but she needs more of the chemical to fully wake him up. Nitscha defends that she did what she could to make it safe, but the student who died didn't follow her instructions. She agreed to help them to make sure that they were all safe during level 3. She reveals that she's undergone the D procedure several times as well. Nitscha tries to get sympathy from them, but this doesn't convince the group. Unwilling to back down, Nitscha sedates Jane to escape. Peach and Sin apprehend the professor while Wynn tries to resuscitate Jane. After she kicks Sin off, Peach pins Nitscha down while trying to inject her with a sedative. June and Wynn attach a defibrillator on Jane while Nitscha gets the upper hand against Peach. Sin regains consciousness and knocks out Nitscha. With one second left on Jane's watch, Wynn activates a defibrillator, but it doesn't work. Wynn performs CPR on her while June weeps for her sister. Angry and in despair, June drives her fist against Jane's chest, and the force miraculously restarts her heart. Soon after, Nitscha is arrested, and all students who underwent the D procedure had their chips removed, though none of them got paid anymore. Wynn returns home, and his father promises to return all his mother's items. Wynn happily hugs his father, glad that he made it home. Jane opens their gate in the morning and finds June arriving with bags of groceries. June now helps out with the family business while their grandmother is back home. Sin has finally quit medical school and entered communications like she always wanted. Peach has also removed himself from his online life and happily embraced the real world. The four continue their friendship and support one another as they overcome their insomnia. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.